um, I guess looking at look where you where you are now in in, in your roles in, in, in the um, in the arts, kind of what other skills do you feel that you need now as arts leaders aside from passion, knowledge, and sort of that artistic side? I would say that the of course you need the basic you, you need to be literate you need to be numerate you need to be able to read a balance sheet you need to be able to handle the finances you need all that you need to be able to articulate you need to be able to write you need to be able to be persuasive you need to be able to fundraise you need to be clear-sighted to know where you're going to take people with you all of these things but I would say that the one most important uh, thing for me throughout all the years is resilience. And resilience is something um, that I think you can train. I'm absolutely convinced that those of us that have got to this age and this business are the ones that have fallen down time and time and time again, but got straight up again and thought, well, what went wrong there? What was wrong? And just got on with it. There's so much that you can't control. I, I thought that very much when I worked running my own organisation. When you end up inside a very large bureaucracy, it's even more so. There are things you cannot control and you've got to learn to accept that somehow. But you, you never give up. So there's a kind of ingenuity and resilience to make sure that you, you get what you want. You get where you want to get to for your organisation, for your department, for the project you're running, for the people you're promoting, the people you're working for. I think that all the, all the things that Cathy has mentioned as being qualities or experience are essential. I would say the one thing you really need to be able to do is to listen. Because you're working with and through other people. And if you can't hear them, then you won't be able to lead them. And if you can't understand what their ambitions are, um, you won't be able to shape those ambitions in a way that is um, rewarding to them and ultimately also rewarding to the institution. So I'd say it's about paying attention to everyone else and not to yourself. Yep. I think that you do obviously have to be able to pick your, as Cathy says, you have to pick yourself up off the floor um, again and again. Uh, the other thing you probably have to learn is not to let other people know that you um, are frightened, worried, doubtful, um, that doesn't mean to say you can't share those concerns, but somehow if people don't believe that you know where the organisation is going, they will suffer some kind of loss of confidence themselves. Mm. One thing I notice very quickly, and it ties in a little bit to what you're saying, is that sometimes you've got to make a decision. And sometimes making a decision quickly is more important than making the right decision, as long as it's not too big. And it's something to do with instilling confidence. It, it's not showing that you can't, that you don't know, that you are uncertain or out of your depth. Sometimes, I think you can see it sometimes when people just need a bit of leadership. And I noticed that very, very early on, and I found it quite frightening. But I got used to it, and sometimes I see it in myself that you just think, make a decision now, somebody. You know, let's just, and it can sometimes just push a situation on. I don't know whether you mm. recognise that. I think large organisations hate uncertainty. Yes. Probably small organisations hate uncertainty, that's true. And sometimes it's better to be moving in a, in a direction, even if it's the wrong direction, because you can somehow perhaps correct that. Yes. Um, Whereas if you're stationary, you're, well, everyone's just looking around and saying, well, where do I go next? 